I, I sense, Greg, in you a conflict that you don't know. You're, you're not convinced with the prevailing narrative. Yeah, that's a pretty good assessment. Uh, I can feel the galvanizing force of these stories that kind of have sped up and are accumulating to create a narrative. And they only go in one direction. And I understand why they only go in one direction, because it's the invaded who experienced the atrocity. Right. And that's all we're going to see. However, I can't help but feel that this is a lot like a, a, a other stories that we've gone through in the digital age in which an image is taken and then played over and over and over again to to create some kind of emotional response out of you because that makes a profit for news companies. Right. So we had uh, for a long period of time there we saw nothing but videos of police brutality. And then over time, we discovered the mundane reality that police were interacting with suspects in high crime areas, and that led to certain kinds of problems. That's the mundane reality. But instead, we were pummeled, pummeled with images of police brutality, which led for a year of, of riots. There's some good things and some bad things coming out of this era. This is like a crisis that you're seeing in the digital age. So that means if there's almost a self-healing capacity around the world, everybody can join in and do something about it. I think that's really good, whether it's like humanitarian or what. We're all seeing it at the same time. There are crises like this that have happened for thousands of years and nobody knew. We just didn't know, but now we see it. The bad part about it is, there is this galvanizing kind of narrative that is there to create a reaction. And if somebody like me says, hold on a second, and you try to counter the drumbeat, you're seen as an inconsiderate, cold-hearted pussy. But if you amplify this story, if you amplify that story, why can't you be called pro-war? If you want to push this stuff, why can't I call you pro-war? We are stuck in the prison of two ideas right now, where it's you're either got to be one way or you got to be the other. It's not as clear as that. It's somewhere in the middle. And just saying that you have to do something is not enough. Just because the news is pushing these videos at you doesn't mean you got to do something. Yeah, good evening, Judge. And speaking as someone on the ground, I want to say that this is not the media trying to drum up some emotional response. This is absolutely what's happening. From the cities of Kharkiv to Mariupol to Kernikov, they are being absolutely flattened. And from all corners of this country, people are fleeing to, for safety. Two million of them, as you say, so far have gone. And in the city of Mariupol, people are drinking water from puddles because the Russian forces haven't allowed them to get out. When they have tried to get out, they are shelled. Those routes are mined. The Red Cross buses have been unable to get in. It is an absolute catastrophe. And the people caught in the middle uh, are the ones who are really suffering. And don't take it from my words, take it from the words of some of those who are trying to flee. Have a listen. We're just saving our lives and that's it. That's, that's all we can do here. What have, what have you left behind? Our families, everything. Everything is we, we have two bags and that's it. There is more video than we know what to do with. So often does it come in, uh, and so widespread is it. Uh, it is a tragic, tragic thing that is happening in this country. We will continue to cover it for you here on the ground, but it is only set to get worse. So Greg Gutfeld is skeptical because the stories that we're seeing out of Ukraine, where Russian troops are indiscriminately slaughtering civilians and bombing children's hospitals, are creating a narrative that only goes in one direction. Yeah, um, I wonder why. He even concedes that he understands why this is. He literally says it's the invaded who experienced the atrocity before then continuing on and just undermining the very point he just made by voicing yet more skepticism because of the nature of news in the digital age. He explains that the same image can be used over and over and over to elicit an emotional response. And let me tell you, if there is one thing that Fox hosts know about, it is using one image over and over and over to elicit an emotional response. Like how Fox was so hellbent on pushing the narrative of empty shelves to attack Joe Biden that they aired photos that had been airing since 2011, more than 10 years ago. Talk about recycling old content to prove a point. What about the endless coverage of migrant caravans that precedes every election, to the point where viewers think that immigration is the only thing happening in this entire country? Or when Fox finds a heroin needle in a big city of millions of people and goes on a four-week coverage bender about how the entire states of California and New York are on drugs. That network exists almost solely to exploit one isolated incident to the nth degree to the point that one needle looks like a countrywide epidemic. So maybe the reason that Greg Gutfeld has all this subconscious resentment for media that seeks to elicit an emotional response by using old images on an endless loop 
is because of the network he works for. Gutfeld goes on to explain that exploiting the same image over and over, again with zero self-awareness, actually serves to hide the mundane reality behind those images. Now, just so we're clear, what we're talking about is an unprovoked Russian invasion of Ukraine, an unprovoked slaughtering of Ukrainian civilians, an unprovoked bombing of residential buildings and hospitals and schools. Greg Gutfeld, working for a network that at least purports to be news, ostensibly knows all of this. So again, what is he trying to say? That behind the bombings and killings, there's a mundane reality that is somehow normal, acceptable? I'd say that's shocking, but it's Greg Gutfeld and he's on Fox, so no, I'm not in the least bit surprised. And finally, he concludes by claiming that we're stuck in the prism of two ideas. Ah, got it. So the real issue here is the binary nature of our response to Russia invading Ukraine and killing thousands of their citizens. We're all just stuck in this right or wrong headspace and there's no room for the enlightened folks like Greg Gutfeld who recognize the nuance in this invasion. And here I was thinking that a totalitarian state led by a warmongering dictator was a bad thing when in reality, the issue here is that I'm just stuck in the prism of two ideas. Yeah, no, things are, things are in much clearer perspective now. And by the way, it didn't end here. After Benjamin Hall rebuked Gutfeld on air, Gutfeld actually gets in the last word and somehow makes himself out to be even more of an ass. I don't know, Dana, what do you think? Should I address Benjamin Hall's cheap attack on me? Or should I be a, should I be a good co-worker you can't and let it slide? That. You can't but say you, remember what you said about our reporters last week. Be, oh, be, I said wonderful things about that. collegial. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, I think but he the, also promised he would say bad things <laughs> the next <laughs> I day. Yes. I did, but I will be the better man here. Uh, as I said before when this started, we want the quickest end possible. My concern has always been when a narrative creates a story that bolsters one side that is out of its element, will you create more suffering? That was the simple point I'm making, is that could this have been prevented if there was a reality-based decision made and not the David and Goliath narrative, which could prolong this and lead to more suffering which and is, more humanitarian well, crisis? What, what Truth mean, is an absolute two, defense. Yeah, two yeah. sides. Well, two sides. You've got, a, you've got Putin who attacked Ukraine. Yes. What? What are the two sides? Is it justified? Do you have time? Do you want to talk about it? Do you want to yeah, stick to yeah. the simplicity of your... Oh, you mean ideas? there's some justification for the attack by no, Russia on that. Ukraine? This is the problem. He says, should I address Benjamin Hall's cheap attack on me? Because that's what Hall's reporting about the atrocities on the ground are. An attack on Greg Gutfeld. These people are so self-absorbed, so self-important, that they are incapable of acknowledging the existence of other humans. I don't want to put words in Benjamin Hall's mouth, but I'd venture to guess that he doesn't give a shit about Greg Gutfeld, Fox's tired excuse for comedic relief who wouldn't land a gig on a budget cruise to nowhere. I'd venture to guess that Benjamin is solely concerned about what Russia is doing to Ukraine, as opposed to Greg Gutfeld's bruised ego. But I guess I should remind myself of one thing, I shouldn't be surprised that a conservative white man feeling victimized on Fox News is the prevailing narrative here. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.